How you guys doing? What's up? This is Dio Kenny. You might know me from The Hunger Games, from Terminator Genesis, or from Shades of Blue on NBC and on Mnet. And you're watching Red TV. Feel the heat. Just actually, a lot of people don't know that about me. I was born up north, but I mean, I was only there for a year and then I moved to Lagos and grew up in Lagos, you know, for the most part. Um, went to Green Springs and then went to Alashir for a little while, then went to Green Springs, but eventually made my way to the States. I actually finished high school in the States and then went to college out there and eventually, you know, instead of coming back for NYC, I ran away to LA to try and make the acting thing happen. and. Um, yeah, that's the very quick story, you know, of Dow Kinney in a nutshell, yeah, yeah. I was always in the arts. I always did, you know, dramas, plays growing up. I was always, you know, dabbling in that, but it was never really anything I thought would happen or try to take seriously because, you know, I always say, you know, Nigerian parents, they want the power for, you know, it's a doctor, a lawyer, an architect, or, you know, an accountant or something like that. But, um, so that was kind of where my mind was going to the States to go to, to university. That was what I thought I would end up doing. But acting was always a love of mine. And to be honest, the whole going to LA thing was like, just go out there, you're definitely gonna fail. But just at least go and know you tried and then you can come back home and you'll never have to fantasize about whether, you know, what if I had gone, what if I had this? And then, you know, luckily I was in LA for a year and then Hunger Games happened, so. You know, that changes everything, of course. Um, but yeah, it's always been in my blood. It's always been something I've loved to do. It wasn't something that I stumbled into or, you know, um, fell into. It was definitely something I always loved to do. Yeah. Favorite actor of all time, living or dead? Yo, I love Yul Brenner. A lot of people don't know who Yul Brenner is, but like, I grew up watching musicals. You know, I think I was very, my family was very weird. Like my parents, for some reason, they raised us on musicals. So we watched a lot of The King and I and, you know, uh, Sound of Music and South Pacific and Yul Brenner, like in The King and I, you know, was such a powerful actor, of course, rest in peace. But a lot of people don't even know he's like five foot five, you know, in real life. And you, you can't even believe that because in, in the movie, like he, was, he had such power playing the king, you know, that when I eventually found out he was a small actor and he had great you know, stage training and all that stuff of his persona was just, he created that, you, you would imagine him being six feet tall or whatever, that's just in your head. And that's just the power of acting. He was able to transcend his physical form. So yeah, Yul Brenner is definitely a big deal. You know, and I, you know, I'm, I'm old God Lego, so you know, I watched like Checkmate, you know, and RMD was that dude, you know? So you know, I, I definitely look to Nigerian actors too a, a lot, you know? And you know, right now Daniel Day Lewis just can't be beat in terms of his craft and you know Leonardo DiCaprio, you know, they're, they're great Western actors that I look to as well, you know. And actors of color as well, you know, that coming up, the Nigerian God, you know, the David Oyelowos and the John Boyegas and you know, it's it's a good time to be an actor of African descent right now. I love I love all, I love it all. I love thrillers, I love I love science fiction big time, I love just a good drama. And the thing is, at the end of the day, all stories have to revolve around drama, no matter what genre, whether it's horror, thriller, sci-fi, or um, uh, cerebral. Like, at the end of the day, it comes down to, are the characters believable, are the characters relatable? Because people will not go on a journey with people they don't care about. So, whatever the genre is, whether you have stuff exploding, or crazy sci-fi, time traveling, whatever, if people don't, connect with the characters that they're seeing on screen, it doesn't work. So at the end of the day, everything needs good drama at the heart of it. And then you can have magic or whatever, and, you know, all that crazy stuff, yeah. Man, m my story is, I'm very aware of how unprecedented my story is, not to hype it up, but I'd been in LA for a year and um, I had gone to this acting class. I have to tell you the full story because I think it just works better that way. I'd gone to this acting class and my acting teacher at the time was like, 
you know, wow, there's this casting director in LA who is having a personal work workshop. I think you should go and meet with this guy. I think you're kind of what he's looking for. So I went and I read with this guy. And by the way, there were about 50 people in this acting class. And they told the whole class to go. Out of the 50, only four of us go show up for this workshop, right? So I'm looking around like, these people are not serious. Like, you know, I'm trying to get ahead because this, this is a casting director who's actively casting Hollywood right now. His name is Matthew Barry. Matthew, if you watch this anyway, where you are in the world, thank you. So I go to this acting class and I read for this casting director, Matthew Barry, and he really liked me. And he said, Dio, who's your agent? Who's your manager? I'd love to get in touch with them because the things that I'm working on that you should come read for. And I was like, this guy. Yeah, looking at my agent, man, there's nobody. Like, if you want, you know, it's me. And he's like, really? And he looked at his personal assistant at the time, Philippe. He was like, that's going to change very quickly. So people, you know, say this stuff all the time in Hollywood. But I was like, cool, cool. So two days go by, and I get a call from my current manager right now, Con Kasu, and she called me. She's like, hey, Dad, what's going on? Matthew says you should come in and meet with us, blah, blah, blah. You know, and so I went and met with them. And long story short, they were like, there's this thing called the Hunger Games. You're not going to get it. But you should go in and read for it. The casting director is a really good friend of ours, right? Her name is Deborah Zane. She'll tell us whether or not you're a good actor, because we're reps. And we see you, we like you, we like your energy, but at the end of the day, you have to be able to you know, hit your mark and hit, you know, give your lines and all that. So I actually went in on that audition really believing I was not going to get it. I just wanted to impress the casting director, okay? So I went in and I read for Thresh, the role of Thresh in Hunt Games, and then a week goes by and two weeks go by, and. You know, my managers are like, oh, Dio, by the way, your tape was really good. So, you know, we'll mess with you for, for a while. We'll send you on other stuff and see what happens. And that tape just kept going, 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 going. And then I want to say three months um, later, I get this call like, yo, Dio, so they gave you the role, basically. So it was kind of like from nothing to one of the biggest movies in my life. So, of course, things, you know, spiraled out of control after that. I'm on a TV show called Shades of Blue with Jennifer Lopez and Ray Liotta, and it's the longest I've ever had to live with a character, right? And the, the thing with television that's different from film is with film, it's finite, right? It's two hours, so you know where your character starts and where your character ends. With TV, I have no idea where my character is going. You know, I have the general idea of who he is, and you know, you get to build his background, and you really get to, you know, color this three-dimensional character. But, you know, TV is like real life, you know, the characters are living as the story is progressing. So, you know, anything could happen at any time. So you can't over prepare for TV. You kind of have to always be open to, you know, where the story is going to go, but never betray your character or his ideologies or, you know, um, his pathos kind of a thing. So yeah, Shades of Blue has been pretty, 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 pretty tough. I mean, most of the other characters I've played in the past are very much like me. I feel like Thresh is not too far from me or Danny Dyson that I played in Terminator Genesis is not too far from me. I mean, I'm not as much of a genius as he is. The guy created the machines, but um, I feel like I can kind of relate with him in some way. Michael Lohman on Shades of Blue, I, I, to be honest, is the furthest thing from me. And that was a very deliberate decision that we made, my team and I, was we wanted to do something more vulnerable. Um, after playing Thresh and Hunger Games, all the roles we got were like strong, silent type, you know. And so I kind of found myself playing some variation of a cool kind of guy, the cool best friend. But we wanted to do something more vulnerable, a character who was just very lost, very naive kind of a thing, and um, with promises of how, where that character could go, whether he could go dark or whether he could become the strong, you know, hero of the show. So that's interesting to see where his journey is going to go. Yeah. JLo is the homie, man. You know, the funny thing is, you know, that all these weird and so false, you know, misconceptions about her, that she's a diva, and, you know, very high demanding, and that's all nonsense, man. Like, she, first of all, she's one of the executive producers of the show. She co-created it um, uh, with, her, with her partner, Elaine Thomas. And so her DNA is in every fiber of the story. She knows all the characters. She knows the, all, the, the plot points beginning to end. She has an idea of where the series is going to go if we're fortunate enough to have a third, fourth, fifth season. And so when she comes to work, it's like a kid in a candy store. You know, she's all about everything down to the detail of what you're wearing and the sets and, you know, and she just wants it to be the best show it could possibly be. And she's just super warm, you know, on her birthday, she'll have everyone over to her house and, you know, just very welcoming. So 
I don't know where all these other crazy stories come from about her because I haven't seen it at all. But she's, I mean, just amazing person. And then on top of that, just the consummate professional. I mean, always knows her lines, always. She shows up to set, you know, and, um, and is a very giving actress, you know. Even when, you know, the camera's not on her, when it's your coverage, she's behind the camera still giving it 110%. So, gosh, I, I love her, man. That's, you know, the boss, <laughs> so to speak. But she's great, yeah. Can't crack it, John. If you grew up in the 90s like me, Arnold was that guy. Like, I can't tell you how many times, you know, my, my parents could probably attest for this. Like, I watched Commando, like, religiously. I want to say like second grade, third grade, fourth grade. Like I watched that thing till it snapped in the VHS. Yeah, kids, there was a thing called VHS back in the day you probably don't know about. But so, you know, you get this role and, you know, I'm looking at the, the press release and it's like, Daokini lands the role of Danny Dyson. And then you look at also starring Arnold Schwarzenegger, right? And you're like, oh my God. And, I, and we shot in New Orleans and in San Francisco and then I fly to New Orleans and I have to do a fitting. This was the first day I met him. I have to do this fitting. So I get to New Orleans and my PA is walking me through the set. And this big guy, right, gray hair, right, the silver mane on his head, comes out of his trailer with sunglasses on, right, aviators, and a big, like, cigar, right? And he puffs on this thing. And then the PA goes, oh, Arnold, have you met Dio? And he's like, so nice to meet you, Dio, right? He gives me this big, sh and dude, I was just, I don't, I don't find out big, you know, like I'm not really like a, the kind of person who loses them. I lost my mind, man. That's Arnold Schwarzenegger, bro. It's nice to meet you. You know, I heard you from Nigeria. You know, it's a great time in this movie. It was great, man. It was, it was everything. And then some. And then my sisters got to come to the premiere, so they all got to meet him. And, and uh, yeah, it was, it was awesome. You know, I really truly believe that what happened in the music industry in Nigeria is about to really happen in the movie industry, like really, really about to take off. There's some very interesting filmmakers doing incredible things right now. And the infrastructure is starting to catch up with the ideas and the creativity. And once infrastructure and creativity come together, you have, you know, amazing things start to take place. So yeah, you know, my eyes definitely here, you know, I'm, I'm so itching to come back here and do something um, uh, here in Nigeria, whether it's television, whether it's film, whether it's digital, the digital market is, you know, exploding. Netflix is here now, Iroko TV is doing incredible things. So there are different, different platforms for, you know, incredible strong content and, you know, creative people by the boatloads. So yeah, you know, the, I'm reading different things and seeing what's happening, but um, I'd like to, you know, produce something on my own probably, yeah, yeah. I, I dream like a lunatic, okay? So, you know, when you say an Academy Award, I, I'm just gonna, of course, you know? Uh, then when it actually happens, then I'll be like, wow, did this actually happen? And I'll, maybe I'll freak out a little bit. But yeah, you know, I, at the end of the day, truthfully speaking, an Academy Award is just a eight pound piece of lead, gold plated lead, you know? It's really what it represents that should be the driving force, you know? And that represents excellence and being the best actor of your class and hard work and, you know, a lot of man hours on your craft. And so I just want that to be my legacy 10 years from now, just a good body of work, very versatile body of work and um, just excellent, man. And I think that will just bleed into the Nigerian market. You know, if one Nigerian actor is doing well, two is doing well, three is doing well, four, next thing you know, we're very bankable and more people write more checks to tell more Nigerian stories with Nigerian faces. Do it. That's the best thing that anybody could, you know, have told me when I was coming up. Um, a lot of people have told me, you know, this is foolish, don't do it, you waste your time, you waste your money, you, you'll be heartbroken at the end of the day. And the truth is nobody who ever achieved anything of any kind of circumstance in this world, you know, did it without some kind of failure. You know, failure won't kill you, you know. Um, so just do it, you know, you want to be a writer, you want, you know, write it, you know, if you want to be an actor and no one is casting you in anything or no one wants to produce a project that you're doing, do it yourself. You know, I feel like we're in a place right now where a lot of the tools are so accessible to us, you know. There's YouTube, you know, you want to make a movie, make a little movie, put it online, you know, and, and, and try to find ways to support your own craft, you know, because at the end of the day, no one is going to support you if you don't support yourself. You have to believe it for yourself first before anybody else can believe it for you. If you want to do it, if you're passionate about doing it, go do it, period. 
Don't talk about it. Stop praying about it. Go and actually do it, you know. But prayer, prayer is good. But you know, pray and act upon it, for sure.